Alright guys, so we just got back from playing Paragon, which is now called Predecessors. Paragon initially came out in 2016, and it got, and I, and I was wondering by the way, when I picked up this game, I was like, what the heck happened to Paragon? I remember the game, it was in its early beta, I think it was early access, and I was pretty excited for the game coming out. I was like, okay, you know, I really like MOBAs. I really like Smite, and I look forward to seeing more games are entering the field to compete with a game like Smite. I was really interested to see how this competitor was going to do, and quite honestly, I was looking forward to more products like Smite coming out, and for us just to have more options and to see can anyone innovate the gameplay of a MOBA. Well, we had Paragon that was out in 2016. Then it got discontinued in 2018, and then in 2021, it was recontinued, and what they say happened is that they sold on the Epic Games Store place all the environmental effects and the character models for free. So I guess someone just finally picked it up and they recontinued the product, which it's really weird that all this time later, they decided to recontinue it. I don't really know why it wasn't successful at first. I mean, was it just the simple fact that League of Legends and Smite, they were such desirable products during that time that nobody was looking for alternatives and now maybe people are more tired of it, so now they're looking for something new? I don't know. I mean, clearly, there's a different market base today than there was back in 2016, right? There's a bunch of people now who are now available or who would be more interested in picking up these games than before and also now crossplay is a far more popular feature or well let's say commonplace feature in a lot of these MOBA games in games in general than it was back then 2016 so for whatever reason it is we now have predecessors which is the rebranded Paragon they copied pretty much every single character and they threw them right into the game. So first and foremost, the map pretty much looks exactly as I remember the Paragon map looking. The game looks great, the graphics are good, it's Unreal Engine 5. The character models look really good. I'm actually pretty impressed with the way that they look. And another thing is that the freaking women are just not that attractive. Now, 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 I do have to say this. The women are white. Pretty much every character in the game is white. There's like, I think, two or three black people, and everyone else is white or Asian. It's like, wow, um, frick, you don't see that a lot anymore these days. And it basically reminds me of The First Descendant, that game which came out recently, The First Descendant, which is basically Hot Chicks Warframe. That's basically what it is. And I guess some decent, alright looking dudes. But I do have to say, like, Paragon's weird because, and I, I ended up calling it this, it feels like a lot of the people are, uh, um, what is it? It's, uh, it's attractive, or no, it's woke attractive, or it's ugly attractive people, but which is effectively woke attractive. Because everyone's, like, somewhat attractive looking, but there's weird diminishing factors to their features that brings down their overall attractiveness. I mean, all of the women are, they have no freaking breasts. They're all freaking flat chested. I don't know what the frick happened, but none of these women have boobs, okay. Some of the women, they look, I kind of get like slightly dudish features out of them. Like there's this one chick named the Fae. and it kind of looks like a dude. Low key looks like a dude trying to be a freaking woman, so. A little bit. So I'm kind of like sitting here thinking to myself, well, what the frick is going on here? The women don't really look that attractive. They don't really have breast size. There's just things that aren't really that sexualized or attractive about them. But in the end, a lot of the women are white. Okay, that's good. We don't have a lot of games anymore that have white women or white people in general. And a lot of the dudes are white as well. So that's cool, but again, like even the dudes, there's things that are a little bit diminishing about them, even though they're largely kind of attractive for being dudes. So it's just really strange how the people look. There's something uncanny about it, and I'm having a hard time really figuring out what it is, but there is something uncanny. 
Regardless, we have women that look baseline attractive. Could they be more attractive? Yes. Are the women completely armored up and there's no cleavage? Yes. Is the only attractive chick that I would absolutely smash through her freaking cheeks in two seconds, Shinbi, yes, who's basically a Kawei pop chick. Uh, by the way, wow, that was such a fad. That's over now. Yeah, remember Kawei? Remember using the peace sign? Oh my gosh. Saying stuff like fierce and that's so fetch. Oh my god. Bro, that stuff is done. That freaking trend is over. Nowadays, everyone's so retarded. Now we're trying to say, Finna for real, brother. Finna for real. Oh, man. That, that's so wild, dude, brother. Just all this freaking stupid Ebonics bullcrap that we now say. I, I, I would take those freaking trends from 10 years ago over the trends that we have today. The trends we have today are freaking dog crap. It, it just shows how low our freaking IQ levels are dropping right now. And oh, love it. God, don't even get me started with all the other Ebonics bullcrap that's taken over culture and society. Please, give me back the freaking Kawaii pop girls. Love a God. Yeah, remember freaking Senpai? Yeah, remember freaking Sugoi? Uh, something Mi-chan? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I miss what things used to be because it was so much better. And remember goth girls and remember emo girls? Jeez Louise, I could freaking go for that again. Even though I never liked it, it's like, well, frick. I mean, I knew at least one attractive, uh, I think, emo chick who was kind of like a mixture of goth and emo. And I was like, kind of weird, but, you know, we can make it work. <laughs> I mean, no, for real though, man. It's like, I would take all those weirdo trends that was going on back then. Freaking Twilight with all the, I mean, Twilight was also emo vampires and all that. But it's like, again, just all the weirdo trends that were going on back then, way better than what's going on now. What the F? I mean, now all the trends of today, it's, it's a fall of Rome. That's our trends of today. It's the fall of Rome. Degeneracy here, degeneracy there. It's not, oh, let's find a weird way to fetishize freaking straight people, normal people. No, now we need to fetishize complete degeneracy. Now it's, hey, uh, you know women and you know dogs. I won't go any further than that. But let's just say that bestiality is something that people are not so against anymore. It's freaking weird, okay? We've got some real problems right now, and I don't know what the frick is wrong with people, but here we are. You know, the largely non-weird, but kind of weird, trends of yesterday are now so taboo, I don't get it. Anyways, this game follows a lot of those trends, and I'm largely happy with it. I'm largely happy with seeing a game that's largely white people, but that that's the point here, man, is that there used to be a time, and I said this, 2016 was the last great year for gaming. Ever since then, things slowly became feminist. More and more feminist, more and more woke. And yes, Overwatch was proto-woke, but many things stopped being woke by the time of 2016. Up until then, then that's when things started becoming woke. But of course, again, we, we had a lot of products that were still making women kind of masculine or just diminishing their sexuality. And that's what, that's what was going on in 2016. I mean, again, Paragon, how many of the women in this game, they look like the proto-woke women, right? Let's still give them attractive faces for the most part, but let's not give them sexualized bodies that men want to find desirable and they want to ram through, okay? You know, blast those cheeks. Yeah, no, no longer anymore is that the case nowadays, but that's what it used to be once upon a time because women used to be attractive and in gaming, you, women used to be freaking desirable. I mean, remember Lollipop Chainsaw? Remember Catherine? Remember Persona 5? Remember all these games that had sexy, attractive women? It was niche games and also the mainstream titles. You always had sexy women. Nowadays, you're freaking strapped, bro, to find a sexy woman in gaming. It's really difficult. The only recent examples have been, and there were huge controversies around this, and even a lot of censorship on these titles. And that was Final Fantasy VII, Rebirth, and also Remake, but specifically Rebirth, with Tifa being very uh, attractive and sexy, and god dang, what's up, girl? But then you also have Eve from Stellar Blade, and there is huge controversy around that. Just any any game having sexy, attractive women, 
who are white, it's just, well, you know, white in skin tone, but these women specifically are more Asian, but Tifa, I don't know, she's kind of more mixed, she's like Americanized, she's more American than she is any part Asian, well, no, yeah, she is American, but it's like, there's like a weird Asian element to Tifa, it's really weird, but she, ultimately, I guess she's like Japanese, but most, I think she's 75% American, anyway, don't give a crap, Tifa's hot. And then of course Eve is more, she's more Korean and god dang, I'm bad, I'm down, I'm so down bad for Korean chicks, holy crap, they're so freaking hot. But anyways man, th those are the only real examples we have of sexy women today. Oh, and then we did have the first Descendant, which was a crappy game, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know if I can come around on it, there's a lot of things I don't like in the review, by the way for that game, the review, or the impressions review will be coming out soon, or maybe it's coming out before this video, don't know. Whatever it is, that game also had some sexy attractive women, but ultimately, the game wasn't really that good, but I like the fact that this, it's a lot of white women, and a lot of them are freaking sexy and attractive, I love that. But again, the game was very disappointing in of itself. And by the way, I love the trailer for the first Descendant, it was a great trailer, overall. Whoever the frick made the trailer, they're so good at narrative direction compared to whoever wrote the story for the game itself. I don't know who made the trailer, but frick, that guy is really talented and he knows what he's doing. So anyways, I enjoy the gameplay of Predecessor, and I actually, when I was picking up the game, I found myself actually enjoying it. Now I haven't made any of my own builds in the game yet. But I did find the gameplay enjoyable, I did find the characters enjoyable, I do for the most part I'm enjoying so far, I haven't used all the characters, but there's a good portion of them that I have used, about like 13, 14, or I think it's like 15, 15 characters that I was able to use because of free rotation, characters that are free, yeah I think it's somewhere in 15, I think I used 15 characters. So, I enjoyed the characters I did use, that includes Grox, Rampage, Iggy and Scorch, Morgesh, Serath, Shinbi, uh, Aurora, that chick's freaking overpowered, in some essence. Um, of course, if you go up against the right team, then Aurora gets her cheeks smashed in, so that sucks, but... I used a lot of characters so far, some of them I like a lot more than others, that's for sure, but for the large part, I enjoyed a lot of the characters, their abilities look good, the character models look great, the gameplay is largely fun, I find a lot of the characters, for the most part, I, you know, there's some uh, symmetry between these characters from Smite and or League of Legends to predecessors, okay? A lot of them are very similar to each other, but ultimately there's enough variation that they feel mostly unique and I did enjoy what they had to offer. I enjoy the flow of the map, I enjoy going through the camps and then going into the lanes and attacking. I do enjoy a lot of these elements. I do kind of wish there was a little bit more going on on the map, but for the most part, I enjoy the game, and I continued playing it after picking up the game first and foremost. So, and typically whenever I first pick up a game, I might just lose my interest. I might be like, you know, I can see this here, I, I can see that there. I'm kind of enjoying these random aspects here, there, and everywhere, but then there's just certain things that grind at me, and I'm like, I'm not enjoying this, right? And that happened with Evil West when I picked up that game. There's things I appreciated about the game, but ultimately I didn't really enjoy the game that much. And the same thing happened when I picked up... Oh frick, what is the game? I picked up another game recently. I mean, first Descendant, I was not enjoying that whatsoever. I mean, there's so many things that are just bad about that game. But there was another game outside of Evil West that I had picked up recently, oh it's Jedi Survivor, and I made it midway through that game before just frick, I could not stand it anymore, I was like, what the frick man, this game is so vexing, it's so redundant with the gameplay, and a lot of the fights that you have with a lot of the enemies, the game just overstays its welcome, it doesn't have enough enemy variety for you to justify continuing your gameplay experience with it. Okay, and th yeah, yeah, no, 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 I mean, there's, the game's just so long, there's a lot of enemies, air quotes, a lot of enemies in the game, but the game is so long, it's just like, once you're midway through, you're like, whoa, this is overstaying its welcome, that's for sure, but for a game like Paragon, me picking it up and playing it, 
And right now, I'm actually having issues playing Smite 2. I mean, Smite 2, I've been recently playing that game, and there's something about it that I've been kind of not really enjoying that much. It's kind of strange, but I just, it's not catching me yet, and I don't know why that is, but it's just not doing it for me. I picked up predecessors and I'm enjoying the game so far. Not only am I enjoying the game, but it's it's fun. I enjoy the characters. It's fun experimenting with them. And in the end, I kept on playing the game past the time of actually picking it up. So right now I'm sitting at, I think, level 16. And I was not expecting to play the game for that long, but I kept on picking it up and playing it. So yeah, there's something enjoyable about the game. I personally like it. Again, I haven't really tested around with the items in the game. There's not too many items, but there's not too little. So I will start trying to make my own builds soon enough. And it seems like the items are unique enough. I don't know if there's any detriments to the items that I see yet. But for the most part, they're pretty alright. They're pretty interesting. Certain characters, by the way, are absolutely overpowered. And I do have to criticize this about the game. At first, I thought the game was hit scan, right? That you fire off a ranged attack and it immediately hits your target. Well, no. The game is actually, and then I thought for a second, like, is this game that there's bullet time? And no, there's no bullet time, exactly. And what it is, this game is a weird in-between of hit scan and bullet time, okay? So you have to kind of lead a target, but your bullet will not directly hit a target the second you fire off a shot. So it's very annoying to use ranged characters because there's a lot of attacks that you will fire off and it'll just miss because you think that the game's hit scan, it's not, but then you try to lead a target and you'll miss the shot because the game's also not bullet time. So whatever it comes down to, it's somewhere in the middle where you have to like basically aim on the direct edge of an enemy character, enemy player, if you want to hit a moving target. It's really annoying. The aiming is really made for PC. If you're gonna play a ranged character, it does not feel like it's made for console. I'm playing on console. It's very annoying to aim at a target and try to fire upon them and hit your shots. It's very annoying, I don't understand it, but it's very frustrating, all things said and considered. Whatever it comes down to, I'm actually planning on playing the game a little bit more past me making this review video or impressions review video. And typically, sometimes I might lose interest in a game after making the impressions video. So I do enjoy aspects of this game. Again, the women are not attractive. What the frick? And this is something that really does pull back from the game and all of its qualities and all its worth. And again, this game is clearly proto-woke. This is proto ESG because there's a time where noticeably women were being made less attractive in games but they were still like baseline attractive and that's what happened in Overwatch I mean the women Overwatch was super proto woke but the women they were largely attractive but you could tell certain chicks they were a cups when they didn't need to be a cups they had no breasts they also had these also you had muscle women and stuff like that and by the way there is muscle women in freaking predecessors. I can't stand this freaking trash. So they went out of their way to do a lot of the proto-woke things with Paragon when that game was initially coming out. I don't like it. I hate it. I hate how the women are not that attractive or sexualized. I hate how they're completely armored up, clothed up. I hate it. They need to have freaking cleavage. They need to have some kind of sexualized outfits or uniforms. Love of God. And that's not, that's not what we have here in this game. It sucks. Yeah, so whatever it comes down to though, man, they have skins for characters in this game, and I'm like, who would purchase any of the skins in this game? You understand that like, when I pick up a game like Smite, the only reason I would ever care to pick up any of the skins in that game is either something looks really cool, which typically means it's something that isn't female, it's a male or like beast creature, like Cthulhu, and they gave a really cool skin to the character, or Jormungandr, right? But let's just face it, the overwhelming majority of the reason I ever spent money on Smite, Smite 1, for the cosmetic skins in the game is for one, for the longest time, I was purchasing gems so that I could get the Buccaneeth skin, okay? Neeth with a corset and her freaking boobs being pressed together, they look freaking amazing. 
one of the sexiest skins in the game, okay? And there's a bunch of sexy skins in Smite. The only reason I ever really gave a crap about spending any amount of money was so that I could get the skins, the sexy skins, on the women. That's it. This game has no sexy women to begin with. The women don't have desirable features. They don't have humongous boobs, okay, like Neith or Aphrodite or whoever else. They don't have that in this game. The women are not sexualized, but yet they're selling these skins thinking, oh, you're interested in buying any of the skins in this game, right? No, not at all. I'm not interested in picking up a skin for women that barely have any breast size. They're not that attractive. They're barely, bare minimum, attractive. They're like sevens out of tens or whatever, okay? They're not Neith, who's basically a 10 out of 10. Love of God, that chick's hot. But then they expect you to spend money. And, and, and here's the thing. I have to be very clear about this, bro. I have to be super clear about this. They need to scrap the freaking character models for the women in this game. Scrap the character models. Do away with it. Replace them. And give or, or have this, for the large part, have mostly the same women. But some of them you really need to remake some of them. Like the Fae. Make the Fae a sexy, attractive, blonde woman with long, flowing hair and give her larger breasts, okay? That's simple. A lot of the freaking female characters in this game, they need to have larger breasts and also sexualized outfits. A character like, for instance, Serath, she needs to have sexy battle armor with cleavage, okay? And larger boobs. She already has largely large boobs, but she needs to have a sexualized outfit. Shinbi. Shinbi needs to have a much more sexualized outfit where you're seeing more boob angles and more cleavage. What the frick are we doing here? You've got a bunch of other female characters in this game. They need to redo some of the women's faces, some of their hair, because they need to have just their hair long and out, okay? Not bunned up. And then again, some of these women, you have another chick. I think her name's Lieutenant something. She's in complete battle armor. Okay, do away with that. Give her sexy battle armor. Give her give her battle armor that has like, you know, like see-through angles, right? Uh, what do you call it? The kind of fabric that is some kind of see-through fabric that you see side boob angles and give her like some kind of outfit like Zero Suit Samus. Some kind of skin tight outfit. And that's the thing that after playing this game that became very apparent to me. Gay men made the freaking characters for this game, okay? Gay men made the female characters for this game. That is so clear because no straight man would have made the women like they did, where the women barely have any breast size, they barely have sexualized outfits. What the frick is going on? The women could be sexier. The women could have sexier outfits. The women could have larger boobs. The women could have sexier faces and long flowing hair. They refuse to do that for this game because, again, this game is proto-woke. Again, something a part of feminism is to reduce the length of women's hair because that's a part of their sexuality, a part of their attractiveness to men. Men love long hair. There's a reason why they gave a lot of the women in this game short hair. There's a reason why a lot of feminists have short hair. It is desexualizing behavior and cues to be given off to men. And that's what we did with this game. We have a lot of women, they're completely covered up, a lot of them have no breast size, a lot of them, you look at them and you're like, this chick could be way hotter, but they went out of their way to make her unattractive, what the frick is going on? And again, when you look at a lot of their outfits, you're like, D dude, no straight man made this game. This game has a bunch of freaking gay dudes, and they're like, oh, let me go make my little feminist archetype female. Oh, men are totally gonna have it down bad for her. No, they're not. And again, they, they try to sell skins for these female characters. What the frick? You're not gonna sell any skins for a bunch of women who aren't sexualized, and they're not that sexy. Again, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, there's some exceptions, and when I say exceptions, there's like small little things, like Aurora, that chick. You can, you do get a side angle on her left butt cheek. She has this little uh, kilt or whatever, and part of the kilt is showing off her butt cheek on the left butt cheek, okay? That's it, though. She's not sexy beyond that. She doesn't have any impressive boob size. She has really short hair. Again, what the frick is going on here, man? 
Anyways, I am so disappointed with the way that the women look, and I'm just going to be honest. If these developers want to see predecessors be a successful game for long term and grab more men's attention, more male gamers' attention, they need to scrap the character models and remake the women, specifically the women. Everyone else... They look largely fine, but they need to scrap the character models for the majority of the female characters in this game, and they need to go out of their way, and they need to buff up the breast size, sexualize the outfits, elongate the hair. They need to do all these things, and then we're fine. But of course, they didn't do it. And for that reason, dude, I'm gonna tell you this. That is a huge detraction from this game the women are not sexy and attractive enough what were they thinking again this is going to hurt the game long term they need to really think about this or else this game's going to die it's just that simple men want to see sexy attractive women they love it they want to see it freaking do it and by the way that will help them actually sell skins in this game if you have women who are sexualized they're sexy and they're attractive if they have that in this game then they can actually sell skins very easily and another thing by the way remove Terra. Terra, obviously the muscle woman of this game who they make the face of the game for some reason what the frick are you doing Terra was intended to be a man that is so clear it's so clear that she is an esg character a woman who was made masculine who was supposed to be a freaking man originally but then they turned the dude into a chick that's what they did remove Terra from the game and they even tried to sexualize Terra. what the f with fish net stockings covering up her cleavage Stop it, this is gross, this is disgusting. Scrap her character, remake the character, make Terra a man. Make it a burly dude with a shield and a freaking axe, like the character is. What the frick are they doing? I don't know, but make it a freaking man. Clearly it's supposed to be a white burly man, and they went out of their way to make a white burly woman what the frick is going on here bro what the f i cannot stand feminism i'm getting fed up with this trash so again make the women attractive make them sexy make them dainty and sexualize them i am so sick and tired of esg characters and if they don't make these changes yes this is going to hurt the game long term and this game is not going to do that well moving forward and that's probably why paragon didn't do that well to begin with because honestly i largely enjoy the gameplay and i think that the only thing that probably hurt the game long term is that the people are not that attractive to look at specifically the women and when you have a male audience and that's what gaming is they want to see attractive, sexy women. They don't want to be demoralized every time they load up your game, okay? It's that simple. Anyways, man, is the game fun? Is it worth your time? Is it largely enjoyable? I would say yes. The game is free, so you can pick it up, check it out, see if you like it, see if it's fun. For myself personally, I've enjoyed it. I don't know how long I will stick around with the game. I will say this. I still hate within a lot of multiplayer games the whole issue with pre-mades and I want games to start removing the ability for pre-mades to be an option I'm, and really what I'm, I mean by this okay fine certain people want to team up with their friends and then they want to go dunk on a bunch of lobbies full of randos okay by the way that's some of the gayest crap that you can ever do in gaming I've been a part of it being a part of a freaking pre-made is gay but they need to give the option to solo players like myself. I don't want to make pre-mates. I'm not interested in doing it. They need to give you the option as a player that you can turn off pre-made lobbies. That you only want to play against randos. Allow that to be an option that you tick on and off as a box. That no one on your team and no one on the enemy team can have a pre-made. This needs to be something 
that developers make as an option because this hurts multiplayer gaming whenever you're sitting around and you're getting dunked on by pre-made lobbies where you have these freaking players and they're teaming up on you you're a solo laner and you have jungle and solo and they're farming out your lane you have a rando on your team who's your jungle you're the solo laner and your jungle will not help you out in your freaking lane to freaking save your life Whenever you're in a lobby that is a pre-made, it is so obvious. I am sick and tired of this. I hate it in multiplayer gaming. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is why I have quit a lot of multiplayer games that I've ever played. Because whenever people are working together behind the scenes, beyond the other players who come in randomly as solo queues, this sucks for the other players. I want to pick up a game like Smite, Smite 2, Predecessors, Age of Empires 4. I want to pick up these games and have a multiplayer experience. I enjoy the competition, but I do not enjoy the competition when people bring in their freaking buddies and then they get these freaking easy wins and easy victories. And yes, I refuse to make a pre-made. I am not interested in making a pre-made. It's annoying. It takes too much time. It takes way too much effort and work. I don't want to do it. I just want to pick up the game, play it on my own time, and I don't want to run into pre-mates. And that, that's another issue with a lot of most multiplayer games, is the fact that there's any such thing as a pre-made. League of Legends largely usurps this problem and they're ranked. No, 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 just for, forget that. Yeah, you can only team up with one teammate, but it's still stupid, it's still bad, and I, I freaking hate it. In every game, it hurts your experience as a player that you cannot turn off pre-maids. I do not want to play against pre-maids enough with pre-maids. Besides that, man, if you can avoid the pre-maids, the game is fun. I say check it out. See if you enjoy it. It's free. Just play like a couple of matches. If you like it, uninstall. But whatever, man. I think it's enjoyable, so give it a shot.